Just a bit about me. Um, as Natasha says, my name is Joe Howell. Um, I've been in recruitment for about five to eight years now, give or take, dipped in at the beginning, dipped out, decided I quite liked it and came back. Um, I have two passions. One is recruitment and recruitment technologies. And the second, by the slide you can probably tell, anything comic book, superhero, or kind of DC, Marvel kind of stuff. So I'm going to bore you or talk to you about both things. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can use recruitment resource and technologies to become a recruitment superhero. You got like that. That's good. Edit for the Marvel fans in the room. So um, before I jump into that, who here has heard about Blue Square, the company Blue, and the Blue Square Group? Please, one person. Yes, because I spoke to you before the presentation. Great, thank you. Um, don't worry, Blue Square are quite a kind of secret, hidden kind of company that we're trying to start to brand out and really get ourselves known. We ultimately are a field marketing agency, which means we help big companies sell more stuff. So we partner with the likes of Samsung. Everyone heard of Samsung? Yeah, a little bit. Some of you might have Samsung TVs. Um, to kind of really look and how they can build their, build their brand and sell more products. So generally, if you're going to John Lewis, PC World, or a Dixon's car phone, you'll walk in and you'll see a Samsung promoter. They actually work for Blue Square, and we have 1,100 of them around the UK and uh, Ireland. Um, so Blue Square in itself, we provide a load of field force people. We recruit, we train, we employ, and we deliver experiential activity around brands. We also have Live Square, which is really, really cool. We do pop-ups and we do really kind of fun times where you basically use VR and all this other technology stuff to make a really exciting kind of uh, environment around a product. Uh, we use Active Square, where we partnered with a company called DC Active, where we do the layouts and really kind of fun kind of um, shopper experiences. So if you've ever been to a Lego store and you go into it, and who's been to a Lego store? There's a lot of young people and maybe we could, great. If you go into a Lego store, You'll walk in, and um, it's a bit bland. You've got all the kind of very expensive Lego products. There's a builder block section in the middle. If you get your phone out and the Lego app and lift it up, a bit like Pokemon Go, you'll see there's a lot of Lego men interacting, and there's a lot of AR content and VR content. So we do a lot of that stuff with DC Active and, and Lego. And Media Square, we develop and we, tra uh, we train a lot of kind of VR and AR content around different kind of products. So in essence, that's what Blue Square do. Um, what I do in that uh, company is I run the talent acquisition team, um, which is about 10 strong. It fluctuates through the year, and I'll tell you more about it later. And we, train, we recruit everyone from an entry-level temporary worker all the way up to director or specialist within Samsung and other companies. So that's enough about Blue Square. I want you all to take a minute and read these kind of, this very kind of comic booky word cloud, oh, word cloud on the board. So... When you read these words, what, what kind of person do you kind of think of? Anyone? Me. You? What, what do you do? Uh, not a lot. Not a lot. Okay, fine. So you're not hardworking. Uh, that's cool. Um, anyone else? What kind of job do you think this person is or from these words? Any guesses? Well, Sorry? That's good. So actually, this word cloud is for superheroes. So these are all words associated with the, um, the superhero or being a hero. Um, I actually think there's a lot of parallels there between being a recruiter or being a talent acquisition specialist. Because we are all definitely hardworking. I would argue probably the most hardworking people in our businesses. Um, we are all great. We're all determined. We're all thoughtful. We're all kind. The only other one I thought about putting on there was patient, because let's be honest, some of our hiring managers test our patients. Um, we're gutsy, and we're spirited, and we're warm, and we deliver a lot of what we do, and we are heroes in our business. If it wasn't for each one of you guys in what you do, bringing in the top talent for your businesses, that business wouldn't be there. So thinking about those characteristics and those words, and taking that next, next step further is, who do you think is the best recruiter ever in fiction and non-fiction? Any, any suggestions? Who do you think is the best recruiter? Anyone? So, for me, the best recruiter, and being such a comic book and superhero fan, 
is this guy. Who knows who this guy is? Anyone? No Marvel fans in here? This guy is a, is a character called Nick Fury, played by the brilliant Samuel L. Jackson. Who's seen, who's seen The Avengers? Yeah, so you know who this guy is. It's cool. Um, so this guy is one of the best recruiters slash superheroes there are. He doesn't have any superpowers. He, um, he started off just being a spy and just building a network of spies and building something called S.H.I.E.L.D. Everyone know what S.H.I.E.L.D. is? Don't worry if you don't. S.H.I.E.L.D. is an organization that protects the world from um, threats internal and external. And he went around and did some great stuff. So um, one of the reasons I think he's great is because a great recruiter is because he's an expert at taking resources that he's got and realizing, have I got what I need for the company or the business or S.H.I.E.L.D. to deliver and do what he needs to do? Um, he built an organization, he made the world safe, but realized he needed a bit more. So he started to talent pool a bunch of people. And he had the foresight to go there. So this is what I imagined. This is not in the Avengers. The conversation was like, and I'm not going to do the Samuel L. Jackson voice, um, for Samuel Jackson. So he would have texted the World uh, Security Council and go, yo, remember the great idea to talent pool the team? And World Council goes, you may remember this. You go to these uh, hiring managers and our managers go, remember that great idea? And he goes, no. Um, the one just in case the world ends and the world's going to fall apart. And uh, maybe, likely, how, how likely is the world going to end? Things are working great. Do you not have vacancies and things to work on at the moment? What's your, just work on your day-to-day. -day. And shouldn't you actually be working on doing some proper work? How many times here have we all wanted to talent pool vacancies and plan and prep? And a vacancy's come along out the blue and you've had to stop everything you're doing and fill or react to that kind of vacancy. I think that's a, that's a common piece. So here, Nick Fury kind of ignored what the World Trade Council said. And for all the really true Marvel fans, they'll know in phase one, at the end of every Iron Man, Hulk and whatever, he walked around at the end on the post credit scenes talking about the Avengers. So generally what happens is when we're the experts and we want to tamp on, we say, oh, you know you've got this new bit of business coming up or you've got these new vacancies, I want to start working on them now. They'll go, no, 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 work on this, work on this. When it comes to a week before going, have you, started this, have you started this kind of work yet? And they're like, well, you told us not to do that. That's pretty much what happened with the Avengers. So the World Trade Council went, hey, Nick. And he went, yo. I'm not very kind of good with the accent. Um, remember that talent pool team idea? And he went, yes, why? Uh, we may need it now. So we've all been there. Remember that idea you had that was great about six months ago? We need to do it. Um, but you're not, you told me not to work on it. And, it goes, and then the World Trade Council goes, change your plans. And generally, I'm not going to swear, but Samuel Jackson will go, WTF. What's going on? We've all had that WTF moment where we gave a great idea six months ago and we wanted to pull it forward. So what he did was he built a great team. Now, everyone must know who these guys are. These are the Avengers. On paper, probably the worst team to save the world. Because if you work from the top right, Iron Man, Tony Stark, the most self-obsessed, absorbed, doesn't want to work in a team, brilliant person, but goes off and does his own thing. You've got Captain America. For the people who don't know, Captain America was from the 1940s, so he's got old-fashioned way of working, doesn't really think about it, wants to get everyone together, a little bit kind of stuck in the mud, not up to with modern times. Thor, the good-looking, the one I think I am, the good-looking, don't all laugh, um, the good-looking, strong, goes headhunted, straight in, doesn't think about their consequences. You've got the big green guy, a guy with pretty bad anger management problems, who goes around smashing everything up. And from a recruitment perspective, whenever you build a team, you always need a couple of internal applications. And these are uh, Black Widow and uh, Hawkeye. So he built that team on paper, were terrible. But he knew when he brought that team together and he tamp pulled that team, that they would do a great job. And they pretty much did a great job. Started one of the most biggest uh, movie franchises in the world. Don't think that was his intention, but they do and they went and saved the world. So you're probably all thinking, What's this got to do with recruitment technologies? And is Joe just talking about his favorite thing, comic books and Avengers? There's an element of truth there. So I'm going to talk about what I did at Blue Square. I've been in Blue Square for a year. When I started with the team, 
Um, the team pretty much recruited with a HR system, which was terrible or wasn't utilized in the right way. I called it recruitment with beer mats, because what would happen if a candidate applied or was sourced, they'd pick up a bit of paper, they would walk over here to another person who would process that bit. If they're successful, walk to another person, arrange an interview. If they're successful, that, walk to another person, walk to another person, and then if they're good, offer. Now think of that as a terrible experience from a candidate, and it was literally picking up bits of paper and moving around. There was more spreadsheets, there were spreadsheets about spreadsheets about spreadsheets. Last I counted when I started, there were 48 spreadsheets just to do with the candidate process. I don't even know what half of them did, but they had spreadsheets. Um, and literally, the model was 98% of our candidates were sourced and there was no employer brand or candidate attraction or any applications. I actually, when I started and went for the interview of the job, I actually applied for the role, one of the roles uh, separately as a mystery candidate, as you do sometimes. Um, I've still not heard back, so hopefully, hopefully they're, uh, they're a lot better now. So um, I'm going to talk to you about recruitment technologies. Now, Nick Fury, when he started off building the Avengers and building S.H.I.E.L.D., he didn't have the fanciest bit of kit. He just literally had his skills and his technologies around being a spy. So when I started, these were the four things, or almost four things, that I had to reevaluate and change um, the Blue Square recruitment team. Um, first of all, we had job boards and review sites. Um, I got saw review was 2.5. Um, with some horrific, horrific Glassdoor reviews. Um, I won't bore you to death. You can go on and read them if you want to have a joke. But we're now at 3.1, which doesn't sound a big jump, but we've done a lot of work around that. Um, job boards, we just used one job board, which was read.co.uk. Um, so our attraction was quite narrow. Um, our careers page was completely black with white writing on, and candidates, it was more complicated you probably pass Mensa better than actually get an application in for Blue Square. So we had that. Um, and that was linked to our ATS that didn't work. It wasn't even an ATS, it was a HR system. Um, one thing we were good at was using um, instant messaging. So actually, all the recruiters had mobile phones. Um, I had to stop some of them using it for their personal usage quite a lot. They don't work here anymore. Um, but they used that quite a lot to text and WhatsApp candidates. And um, one thing they were adamant about, and our client with Samsung was adamant about, was we had to Skype and video interview every candidate. So we had those kind of pieces in there. Now, who's used Skype recently? Does anyone use Skype? You know they're going to stop using Skype. Microsoft to go cut it off. So if you do use it, start using other things. Um, but it was unpredictable and didn't really work. So these, these technologies, I think you guys all have. And my advice to you guys is really review what you've got at your hands. Now, you may not have control over your job board spend, but you may have control over what you post and how you post on their adverts. Um, ATS, we actually moved our ATS, and I'm going to talk more about that in a second, but everyone hates their ATS. Does anyone here love their ATS? Great. What, what ATS do you use? Network. Okay, cool. And there was another hand there, or was it a joke? Okay, Luminous. Anyone else love their uh, ATS? So I'd say probably 98% of people hate their ATS because it doesn't work the way that we want it to work and it's not great for candidate experience. So I really hated my recruitment system before. So we got a new one. Um, so what we did at Blue Square, we got an ATS called Sage People, um, which is um, a really kind of good end-to-end -end ATS and HR system. The reason being is in Blue Square, uh, we do a lot of campaign activity of short-term contracts, so we have to turn candidates around from interviewing to starting very, very quickly. Uh, to give you an idea, I currently have a campaign on at the moment for Samsung for 189 promoters, all have to start in two weeks. So to give you an idea from that onboarding experience, it has to be quick, has to be smooth, has to be slow. Before, we did all that through moving those bits of, paper, bits of pieces of paper. Um, Sage people, we implemented on a record speed of five, five and a half weeks would have been short, but Christmas got in the way. Um, my advice, never, ever implement an ATS that quickly because I think I aged about 10 years. Um, but what we did before we implement that, and I, I recommend all of you do that, go back, holistically look at your recruitment process. Look at it from what the candidates see from the top all the way down to offer and what they get within the first three months or whatever your probationary period is. 
that contact, if there are gaps, is not a great experience. And what we did, we went through everything. We went through all touch points. We looked at all comms, and we looked at what we can do. Are we there yet 100%? No, I'd probably say 75%, and we've got plans next year. But because of this, this has actually revolutionized our candidate experience and our retention. Um, candidate experience. So another thing when I started at Blue Square, look at your experience. So look at the who does the interview. Is it you guys? Is it your hiring managers? Are your hiring managers following the correct script, saying the right things and other things? Who's been, here, been in here and dealt with a hiring manager saying the wrong thing at interview? I think we probably all have had that kind of experience. Um, it's interesting, I always find that hiring managers or line managers never really question um, advice from HR, but they always seem to have an opinion about recruitment. I just always find that quite funny. So they'll always think they've done it better or they've got trained. So what we've, we did, um, we have over 133 roles, last count, yesterday. And each of those has got a separate process, separate uh, scripts, and sort of things. We brought in competency-based interviewing. I'm sure Kat will tell me strength-based interviewing is better later. I'm, I'm sure that the conversation's going to happen. Um, and we set the biggest thing we did with hiring managers and candidates. We were very clear around setting expectation, around timelines, what to do in the interviews, and what not to do in the interviews. Um, we gave them opportunity, we do feedback, but uh, with them we did sessions and training sessions, but now, uh, most of the time, they generally behave and they get the feedback back to us. Um, the system did help with that, but writing those company questions and having those company banks were really, really important. Took a lot of work, had to align it to the company's vision and values, but from, from uh, what we did at the beginning to where we are now, it's worlds apart. Um, it's very, very faint there, but it says talent pooling. Um, who actively talent pulls candidates on any level in this room? Is it easier to hire a talent pool candidate than starting afresh for the guys that do it? Yeah. So really, we all need to move from a reactive vacancies raised, get a candidate to apply, go to a talent pool and be proactive. Now, you're all looking at me going, that's not easy to do. And I, I get it. It's really, really difficult. And we spent a lot of time working together with these campaigns and our locations to build those talent pools. But it is worth the effort to talent pool part of your workforce that comes in. Um, what we did, we did a load of data. We looked at all the vacancies. Which were our re reoccurring vacancies and why? Was it down to the line manager just not being happy in second and what's going on there? Um, is it down to location? Is it down to contract? Is it down to package? So we evaluated everything and pulled it apart. We now actively talent pool probably about 70% of our roles, um, and they're broken down into entry-level employee roles all the way up to mid-management. And diff there's different strategies for talent pool in those kind of roles. Um, on our entry level, it really, really works. And with this quick turnaround we do with hires, it's really kind of popular when we do that. Um, you have to get your resourcing right in your team, because let's be honest, we don't have big enough teams. I'm pretty making a wide assumption there for the work that we need to do. But if you can get in that proactive element a little bit, that'll save time on the long run. Um, recruiter training. So interestingly, I took over a really bad team at Blue Square, as in, not bad, as in unskilled, didn't know about candidate experience, didn't know about ATSs. Uh, when I walked in, none of them had previous recruitment experience. They'd only ever done recruitment through being a temp at Blue Square and working their way up, and they thought, they're all right, we like them. So none of them, they knew what a Boolean search was, was probably about as far as it went. Stakeholder management, some of them had an idea, some didn't. The, consi the consistency was not there from the thing. So we actually invested a lot of time, and I invested a lot of time on training the team uh, with internal stuff I knew, going to events like you guys here, um, and just getting them out there to really understand how to work. And we have a weekly training session for the entire team on a Friday at 2 o'clock, and we go through different topics. Now they lead that and they have different topics. So it might be stakeholder management, and they'll go through half an hour, and they'll have exercises they want to do. It really, really engages them, and it really kind of gives them the kind of tools that they want to do. Um, so have a look at these, uh, have a look at your kind of level. Are you guys happy in your teams, the leaders of the recruitment teams, or what they're doing, and what's their onboarding? We also, any new starter, we redesigned the brand new training and induction that they had. So they really were involved in that training, involved in what the candidate experience was, what the process was, but also what the hiring manager wanted from their role, so they'd go and spend time out there. 
Um, so that's what we did to uh, make us Blue Square recruitment superheroes. Um, I think one thing I'm definitely going to say, um, and this is not because I'm standing here and talking about it, one of the biggest resources that we used was other recruiters and other people that we met at these events. So definitely go to these events, go to the breakfasts. I learned so much to talking to other people and challenges and bringing on different businesses, of course, but you guys are a wealth of experience. You guys really are the recruitment avengers. You guys just need to start talking to each other. So what was the benefit of this? So year on year, our applications went up 85%. Now, imagine what you can do with 85% more applications. These people were informed. We had a website which actually told them what they did and what they did. Our employer brand was there. And I want more, but it's, it's a lot better. 85% is good. Um, our time to fill went down three days. Um, actually, for some roles, it went down 12 days because we realigned the process. We really understood what the hiring managers wanted, and we based a competency-based interview. Some of them went from three to two stages. Having those conversations, being honest, and being and demonstrating that you guys are the recruitment professionals in that relationship in your business really kind of went a long way for us. Um, so you're probably all thinking, oh, yeah, we just got a load of applications, chucked them all in, no assessment, bums on seats, which is a phrase I absolutely hate. Um, but actually, because we were informed, because we were engaged with the hiring manager, because they were aware of the job, our attention was a lot better. In the and it's actually gone up again this quarter. So um, really, really, really massive changes for really just looking at the basic technologies and tools. Um, Top tip, always use WhatsApp if you can't get hold of a candidate. My, my guys love it because you ring them, you ring them, you ring them, they ignore you. Send them WhatsApp, you can see if they've read it or not. So if they've read it and they don't come back to you then, they're not going to talk to you. So, um, so with these, I'm going to show you my Avengers, my recruitment superiors. Here they are. Meanwhile, somewhere in Hartford, doing most of them doing the recruitment bows. Like I said, these guys are probably some of the best recruiters I've worked with. Um, and we've been recognized on a number of different external pieces, but none of them have worked in recruitment before. We trained them, we, got, we kind of upskilled them, and we spent time with them. So you guys can do that with your recruitment experience and take it kind of to the next level. Um, so last thought I'm going to leave you with, are you ready to be a recruitment superhero? Like I said, you guys are the Avengers. You've all got different traits. There's probably a few hulks in there, especially when people don't ask interview questions or send feedback back. Um, Really think about what your resources are. That's what Nick Fury does. He looks at what's around him. He looks at what he can do, what's in his control, what's in his circle of influence, and really utilize that to the max. To be continued. Thank you, guys.